If you've ever been to the Colosseum in Rome, you'll know that most ancient Roman ruins, at least the well-preserved ones, are full of tourists. They got lines stretching out for an hour, and once you're inside, you can't even get past all the people taking selfies. But luckily, there's now an easy and very cost-effective solution for you, which is just go to Syria. And what you can see here is the Basra Theater, which is quite large, as you'll see, and we were actually the only tourists there. So we're walking up the stairs now, and right here you can see the full expansion of it. Wow. It's completely empty, completely quiet. I'll let you listen. That is the sound of complete silence at a gigantic and very beautiful tourist attraction. And now I'm going to go behind the theater up into the blocked off rooftop for the senators and the rich men. But what many people don't know is that Syria is actually full of ancient Roman ruins because Rome used to control much of the land in Syria. Uh, much of it obviously was destroyed catastrophically during the war, like you've probably seen at Palmyra or other sites. And even this Colosseum in particular was used by snipers during the war. They would perch up at the top, the rooftop, and snipe people's heads off, unfortunately. But that notwithstanding, there's actually quite a significant amount of history that's very well preserved all over Syria, from the Mediterranean coast to the inland, uh, and just generally all over. And even behind this theater, you have an old town, which was, this actually was very well preserved before the war. Uh, unfortunately, the fighting destroyed it. All that destruction you see there is the fighting. Before the war, actually, these buildings, these stone monuments were so well constructed, even the ones right there, that people still lived there. From the ancient Roman times up until the present, people were living in those houses. And you can see, unfortunately, lots of bullet holes from the, the fighting. People really destroyed it, the rebels and the Syrian army together. And now, the only thing you can do pretty much is walk around and take in the sights. But one of the main attractions in Syria, for tourists at least, is Apamea, which is this colonnaded street, and it used to be home to a very old amphitheater, but not anymore, been mostly destroyed, and was laced with landmines everywhere as well. To this place, uh, removed all the mines under the ground of Apamea. And where do they put the mines here? Just everywhere? I, I didn't come to this place in that time, but we've heard that the mines were planted all around. Why would they put mines here? Well, you said it was the Russians who got them out? Russian Syrian army. Russian army. Oh, okay. Closer to the Mediterranean coast by Tartus, there's actually a very old ancient Bronze Age cities, so even thousands of years before the Romans, that was ruled over by the Egyptians, the Hittites, and others, called Ugarit, which is now completely taken over by onion blossoms, as you can see here. It's actually the first time I've ever seen flowering onions, uh, and they're all over the ruins in Syria for some reason. But anyways, you can see we're actually standing on the ruins. It's hard to spot, but there's stone blocks everywhere that we're walking through. That's all that remains yeah. of this oh, ancient wow. port city. It used to be very important for trade because it's right on the Mediterranean. Most people don't know that Syria is actually a Mediterranean hotspot. has a very large coastal uh, outlay on the Mediterranean Sea, which was home to many traders. But now Ugarit and other places like it yeah. are pretty much just grazing pastures for shepherds, as you can see here. And lastly, also by Tartus, is this mystery site. We didn't get too much information on it. We were kicked out, actually, by a team of Italian archaeologists. They were conducting some kind of secretive mission to excavate a Roman racing track. And when we started asking about the details, what they were doing, very friendly, the head archaeologist, very Italian man with an Italian accent, got very angry and kicked us out.